Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm well, welcome to all of you. Hope most of you are back at your workplace and keeping healthy and safe, or have adapted well to the new normal during the unlock phase. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to today's webinar. Comscope presents how technology can increase workspace productivity. It's heartwarming to see such a fabulous response to this webinar series brought to you by architect and interiors India. Thank you for taking time out and being here today. My name is Indrajit Sauji. I head the construction and design vertical for ITP in India, and I'll be your host today. Let me begin with a brief introduction about ITP. ITP Media Group is one of the largest foreign media companies in India. The group now publishes more than 100 weekly and monthly magazines, and has a wide portfolio of market-leading digital properties. Some of our well-known global titles include magazines like Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, Time Out, Cosmopolitan, Grazia, Construction Week, Architect and Interiors India, and more similar prominent titles across industry verticals. In India, we have seven titles, including Architect and Interiors India. Architect and Interiors India is our flagship title and is among the most respected and widely read B2B titles in its domain. And as we gather today to learn how technology can increase workspace productivity, I personally believe the increased technological integration is benefiting companies by capitalizing on industry needs, employee engagements, and it's generating increased productivity. Business of all sizes can benefit from putting proper software and hardware tools in place to help them face challenges and improve results. Today's technology and our workforce can communicate instantly from anywhere in the world and access huge amount of cloud-based data at any time. Business, business that leverages these innovations are able to execute, scale, and shift far better than before. Let's figure out from the experts some of the ways that these uh, that they recommend and we can adapt to to increase productivity in workplace by use of technology. We are looking forward to an interactive and engaging session and need your complete involvement. And to ensure this, we'll take a few live questions during the session. For those who want to ask a live question, you may do so by clicking the hand icon in the control panel and my team will get in touch with you. We'll also be running a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So we have enabled our ask a question feature. It's on the control panel at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, just type it there. I promise we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And if you miss anything, don't worry. You'll, we'll be sending across on, on demand video recording to your mailbox and it will be soon be available on our website as well. Without any further delay, let me introduce our partner for today's session, Comscope. Comscope pushes the boundaries of communication technology with game-changing ideas and groundbreaking discoveries that spark profound human achievements. They, collab they collaborate with customers and partners to design, create, and build the world's most advanced network. It is Comscope's passion and commitment to identify the next opportunity and realize a better tomorrow. Discover more at comscope.com. Thank you, Comscope, for partnering with us and for helping us run this informative series of webinar on how technology can help. Let me introduce the esteemed panel for today, starting with Mr. Architect Vista Bhagwagar, Principal Architect Architect Vista and Associates. Welcome, Vista. Thank you. Architect Anupama Sharma, Managing Director, Gensler. Welcome, Anupama. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, Mr. Samir Saxena, India Real Estate, uh, India Real Estate Travel and HSE Leader, Marsh and Macmillan Company Incorporation. Welcome, Samir ji. Thank you. Mr. Piyush Joshi, Vice President, Workplace Services Lead, India North, NetWest Group. Welcome, Piyush. Thank you. Hi, all. And Ashok Srinivasan, Technical Director, Comscope India. Welcome, Ashok. Yes, thank you. The session will be moderated by Mr. Rajat Malhotra, Executive Director, Head of, Enge Head of Engineering Operations, APAC, GLL. Welcome, Rajat. Thank you so much, Indrajit. I'm joined by my colleague, Mr. Vibhav Srivastava, Group Publishing Director, ITP Media. 
And now, before I hand it over to the moderator. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Indrajit. Uh, very, very interesting and very relevant uh, panel discussion and theme. So, uh, firstly, I'm privileged to be moderating this session. Um, immense gravitas experience on this panel. And before, I don't know how you put all of uh, these panels together. You get the best absolutely from the industry um, on such discussions. Um, and I feel intimidated when I'm in the midst of uh, all of these stalwarts as well. But uh, Let's start. Uh, I'm sure the audience will be waiting with bated breath for insights and inputs coming from all of the experts who are there on the panel. So uh, Anupama, I wanted to start with you. Um, we have seen a number of uh, trends emerging in workplace design, right? Uh, especially in the past 10 months, some of those trends have got accelerated, right? Uh, and a lot of those trends are around, and they could obviously there is technology embedded in each of these trends. A lot of those trends are around health, wellness, uh, safety. Uh, and then, of course, the whole trend of productivity has got a fill-in um, in the last eight months, if not uh, anything else. So uh, would like to start with you on your views uh, on what these trends are uh, and how do we see the office space and the workplace evolving um, in the next uh, five years? Sure. Thanks, Indrajit. Uh, uh, sorry. Thanks, Rajat. Um, I would actually, if you don't mind, uh, I have a few slides that uh, I'd like to share. That's okay. I'll just uh, share my screen. And um, as I talk through these slides, I have a total of seven slides that, you know, sort of uh, around this issue, around this topic, and I'll try to go through them as fast as I can. So an important question that the real estate industry is facing today is essentially what is the future of workplace going to be? And what are the significant trends that we're going to see within the industry? And I think for the first time, perhaps, uh, we're really seeing uh, that the notions of work and place have been consciously uh, decoupled, right? So we're not really uh, looking at work and place uh, as, as, a, as a couple anymore. We all know that real estate is perhaps the second largest cost in a, in a, in a modern business, and uh, yet it's often considered a necessary and a static and a fixed cost, right? Uh, and workspaces are rarely optimized for <clears throat> cost, well-being, employee experience, productive working, and environmental impact. So I think very little thought is really given to all these different facets uh, while designing workspaces. Um, in the current scenario, though, where we are all being bombarded by the global pandemic um, and the various other outfalls from it, I think health considerations, employee well-being, et cetera, will really drive the way in which this return to office uh, is likely to take place. And technology and wellness will become the key drivers of change in asset management and in real estate. The question that will emerge is how to really balance density and space utilization goals within the workspace while balancing the physical distance and needs that have come about as a result of the pandemic. And what this would mean uh, uh, on demand uh, for personal space uh, at the office. Right. So this will clearly have an impact on how we uh, design the workplace and uh, you know, the, the needs in the office. So we are seeing three big trends in the market, right? The first is the modified repurposing of the workspace. So while workspace is not a defunct concept, for sure, workplace is here to, say, uh, to stay, the, the purpose of workplace is likely to change. And <clears throat> there's been an expanded ecosystem of the work environment overall, where people are working not just from home, but from other locations as well. And we're seeing that companies are making significant investments in technology to enable virtual working, which has enabled a newfound mobility. And this newfound mobility has created a hybrid work culture and has significantly impacted the workplace. The second important trend we're seeing is the uh, necessity to maintain balance between working, creating a sense of community, and aligning to the values of the company. So we really see that the workplace needs to shift focus to engage, to co-create, and generate face-to-face -face interactions. And there needs to be a shift from focused work to other things in the workplace like collaboration, social interaction, mentoring, and career development, for example. And the third important thing we're seeing is really a significant investment in technology. So companies are doing both front-end and back-end investments uh, that are helping people in their day-to-day -day working, uh, as well as the back-end technology investments that, which pertain to health and wellness and productivity of their workforce. So these are the real uh, three significant trends that we are seeing uh, in the industry as uh, 
currently. Yet another shift that we have seen in recent months, uh, and which is an outfall of the pandemic, is uh, and the work from home culture, is the shift in work patterns and the significantly extended work routines. Right. So instead of the uh, the, the typical spiked 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. work routines that we were seeing uh, prior to the pandemic, we are seeing a significantly increased work day, anything from 6 a.m. in the morning to 10 p.m. and sometimes even beyond with several crests and troughs during the day as one is trying to balance home routines while working from home and a more demanding a work day as well. So in a hybrid work, uh, work, uh, work culture future that we're sort of headed towards, these patterns are likely to continue to shift as we move forward. So the need of the hour we feel is really to make resilient real, real estate decision, uh, decisions, right? So with flex and remote working on the rise, the time is now to leverage gradual reoccupation of the office and to measure our use of and actual need uh, for space in the workplace. So we feel there is tremendous, uh, tremendous potential and need for repurposing of the workspace especially in India, where densities are high to begin with. Without compromising on real estate economies, we feel that higher efficiencies are possible within the existing space paradigms. And the focus needs to really be on active, uh, activity-based offices, which provide greater flexibility and a choice-based working environment with an accompanying flexible work culture. So this can be done in a variety of ways, uh, you know, for example, by a mix of owned core space where companies can own some core space and supplement this with flex workspaces um, outside the office space and with flex work policies as well. Companies may need to start looking at flex workspaces and nodes in the city, for example, to augment quick connects and re uh, remote meetings outside the office. And one sees a trend towards increased investment in collab areas community spaces and amenities, touchless technologies, as also virtualizing the entire workplace experience. So corporates are beginning to reconfigure working styles to maintain efficiency within their organizations. And some of the new trends that are emerging that we're seeing with clients um, in terms of rethinking with respect to square meters uh, of workspace and services that they're providing are uh, you know, services around health and wellness, for example, um, provision of micro hubs, both within the campus and outside the campus uh, in the city, in different nodes in the city, creating agile hubs, uh, uh, for instance, using f &B as a social enabler within these uh, work campuses and the work environment, hoteling spaces integrated with the workspace, um, you know, segregatable neighborhoods within the workspace, uh, and so on, so on and so forth. So really what, what we're trying to uh, uh, reinforce here is that the shift, there's a shift in focused working to really creating these variety of spaces within the workspace and, you know, optimizing the use of space to generate these variety of spaces. So people are no longer just coming into the office just to focus on work. Office space is now going to become, you know, turned more into a hybrid mode, uh, sort of a hybrid model where we, people will start using these more for social interactions, more for um, uh, you know, uh, social enablers, right? R rather than just focus working. Because what we are finding is that with the use of technology and with virtual working, you can work from pretty much anywhere, including your home. So a hybrid uh, sort of work model is, is, is going to start to become more popular going into the future. And then um, tech integration will be key. Uh, journeys, staff journeys through the workspace will be re uh, recalibrated. The mobile phone will act as a uh, digital concierge and there will be on the go space booking, such as, you know, uh, employees will be able to, you know, book car uh, parking spaces in, in the car parking lots through their phones, for example, so that when they when they do come into the work uh, workspace, maybe three days in the week or whatever, they don't have to fight for uh, car, uh, car parking spaces. You know, they quickly and easily find their spot. It's already booked virtually. Uh, the cafeteria uh, experience is also virtualized. Uh, amenities are virtualized. Booking of seats and conference rooms, uh, you know, can be done remotely uh, through through your uh, digital phone. And also enabling smaller group meetings in the workspace, uh, you know, would be uh, made possible. So the whole experience will begin to get more virtualized and more uh, digitized uh, to sort of make it more seamless for uh, coming to the office and using these spaces in a more meaningful manner. And uh, 
you know, the focus will be towards an augmented collaboration experience, like I said earlier. So the focus will shift from uh, just work to a more uh, collaborative, uh, you know, augmented uh, uh, work experience. And uh, the front end tech investments will help people in the day to day working, uh, you know, using tools like Skype, Zoom, laptops, you know, all the Cisco equipment, etc. All of these are static. But in order to co-create and increase interactive capabilities, these static tools are not as effective. So we will find that uh, tech, uh, companies will start to invest in technologies that go beyond what an individual can invest in, right? So to create tools that make the interaction more uh, interactive and uh, you know more sort of collaborative. And the back end tech investments will be more towards health and wellness and to improve productivity. So uh, you know, for example, uh, investments in HVAC systems, uh, ventilation systems. Uh, you know, facade, openable facade systems, uh, as an example, to ensure health and wellness. So I think with that, uh, uh, all I want to say is I think we're going to be in it together. So it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, all of us really work to uh, to uh, to take this forward. Thank you so much, Anupma. I'm just conscious of time. Uh, so, yeah, just to summarize what Anupma has said is uh, repurposing of the workplace uh, to uh, support agility, flexibility, more collaboration. And obviously with the elements of health and wellness, which is taking center stage now. Now, all of this, how do you bring it to life? How do you deploy it? How do you make it work? Is obviously with the help of technology, right? Which is what you covered in the last section. And this is a good segue to go to Mr. Ashok. Um, and he will uh, take us through how uh, technology can focus around uh, productivity. So uh, Ashok ji, um, just conscious of time, maybe if you could wrap it up in 10 minutes, it'll be nice. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. I will, I will just open up my presentation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, some of the technologies, what makes some of the applications, what was, uh, uh, you know, presented by Anupama, uh, a realistic application. And so I will, I will quickly go through this. Now, let me start with some of the uh, data points. And you can see that many of the things what Anupama was saying, it is also captured here. And the most important thing is, you know, this is a white paper which was released by TIA. TIA is a, a global standard organization. It's for the telecommunication infrastructure agency. So this is the standard body who creates the standard, how to communication devices can talk to each other and understand each other. It could be right from the cabling, it could be right from wireless, it could be anything and everything, right? And so in the recent uh, white paper, they, they came out with these uh, six primary categories, starting with connectivity, health and well-being, life and property safety, power and energy, and cybersecurity, and then, you know, how to sustain all these things. And uh, now Gartner, you know, Gartner is a, it's a global organization which does all these kinds of service. And they came out with uh, three important things that how people, it is people centricity and location independence, and then how you have a resilient. And interesting things you will find it here that there is a new terminology called as IOB, that is uh, Internet of uh, Behaviors. Okay. So now what Internet of Behavior does is it try to capture the digital dust. That means how people do the digital transaction, right? Wherever you are, right? I mean, even if you are at home, that's a workspace for you. If you are in an office, that's a workspace for you. And so how you behave in a digital world. And so all these are captured. So now I'm going to talk about some of the technologies, how you enable all these applications and enable all these kind of, uh, you know, the good things, what can be used to increase the productivity in a workspace. And here you can see some of the smart technologies and uh, you can also see that how you can save the energy here, the right from HVAC. HVAC is one big instrument through which you can save a lot of energy okay. and for that you have to do a lot of automation 
and today with all the experience and all the technologies available you can do the automation in a quick way and you can drive it through the app running on your mobile okay it's not only hvac there is the next one if you see that's a plug load plug load meaning your your sockets or your power points even that can be controlled so which means to say that in your workspace whenever you are coming into the workspace you can enable all these things and otherwise you don't need to enable it that and still you can save a lot of energy there and lighting i have another slide also talking about the lighting uh, lighting is a very very uh, key uh, factor in measuring all the behaviors inside a office space right and that helps you to measure and monitor the given space it helps you to realign the space you can do many many things with uh, the lighting itself uh, you know uh, focused on one particular area and then you have a lot of other things like window shading or the building automation and of course the analytics is very important thing because the more and more data we capture from a given point how best you analyze that the result depends on that right and so if you do not analyze it properly then you cannot have a better result state so these are all smart, some of the technologies and as you have seen that the bottom line for all of this is to have a very good network today it and facilities are converging in another words it's called as it and ot that is converged and you have wired and wireless options you know i will also talk about uh, the latest standard on wireless and of course the key thing is the data which is going to flow through and the data collection is not going to be only from the traditional your laptops or the voice over ip phones it can be from anything else it can be even from a sensor hanging above your head right and that's going to collect a lot of data so it's so important that you transport the data securely and then start analyzing that right so if you talk about some of the evolution of the workspaces you know this is i mean nowadays you can find only in google right i mean you cannot when i say google on the search okay not in google office so and these kind of offices are transformed into these kind of offices and so now what is the advantage in this is like what i i just picked up one point from anupama that is hoteling space right so inside the office you can sit anywhere you want right and which ever helps you to keep your productivity high that's that's the bottom line right and so you are not tied up to a desk you are not tied up to a particular space. and from there we have come to the work from home culture but still you know that's also your work space there right so now what are some of the technologies and design factors what we bring into space to enable all these things to enable all the productivity tools is the first and foremost is the design and that's called as the universal connectivity grid so if you actually look at the work space today many of the things are moved to the ceiling right so uh the connectivity to the desk has started reducing but connectivity to the ceiling has increased a lot and it could be many sensors it could be the lighting it could be some of the energy meters it can be many many things there and so there is a clear design criteria which was uh, developed by comscope that's called as the ucg and then you have one more uh, technology called as power over ethernet and so now we were talking about the plug loads a uh, few slides back and now you can also drive the power through the same ethernet cable that is your category 6a kind of cabling and in 2018 end i think somewhere around november december time a new standard was released which is supposed to give you 90 watts of power on the same ethernet technology cable so now you can imagine you can do many things using that power okay and 90 watts of power and uh, you can connect very high high powered wireless or a, a high definition cameras you can put a high definition sensors and so you know there is i mean even the idea is to charge your laptops through the same cable and so that's the thinking what's going on you can connect a vdi without any power in your desk which also helps in hard disking right and so that means i don't even need to put a power to your desk i can just go there sit and plug my ethernet cable and then i start using that particular space right and so 
so many things are developing in that and and this is one of the milestone in achieving all these things and like like i said uh, in any given space let it be a commercial building or a workspace in a in an office kind of environment you cannot find a place without a light right so light is omnipresent everywhere and so now how can we use that particular lighting location to have more and more data coming in and so we put a sensor to the light and so that sensor can start collecting so many data about the behavior of that space and then it helps you to do the analytics and then and then decide how you want to uh, resize the space or reuse the space and then how you can benefit from from those places and so poe helps in all those right and then a new technology is coming up called single pair ethernet and the uh, the main criteria for this is to have a longer length and the main driver for this is the iot internet of things right and uh, and a lot of exciting things are coming up in the single pair ethernet and and i mean it's it's only a beginning this is just a standard uh, no products have been announced and so a uh, lot of things are expected from this which is going to help in increasing the productivity there and of course today the wifi we are already talking about wifi 6 which is the 802.1x and sorry 802.ax and this is uh, supposed to give you uh, 10 gig of throughput i mean you can can you imagine in a wireless you are going to get so much of uh, throughput data and then of course the 5g the most talk, the most buzzword in today's technology world the 5g is coming and so you can imagine 5g for the outdoor office and wifi 6 which is your 802.11 ax standard for the indoor connectivity requirements and so a lot of exciting things are there the whole idea is targeted at the workspace and then how to increase the productivity is the bottom line for all these uh, technologies as well you can have a single network which can combine the it and ot that means your it is information technology ot is operational technology and so you can have basically the it and facilities much today and basically and that helps you to increase your productivity so at comscope what we do is we provide you all types of uh, technology we take leadership and technology role to provide a very simple reliable but at the same time adaptable solutions you know if if we have everything on the on the lab kind of thing then you know how do you make it adaptable and so we make it adaptable so that the users start experiencing the benefit of the technologies whatever is invented so it's uh, as a comscope it's not only focused on the workspace but we are in in the whole gamut of things right from the uh, work smart workspace smart buildings which leads into smart cities and of course today uh, the data centers data center is the brain child especially you can see in these kind of work from home environment the one important facility which is not moved same time which is overloaded is the data centers right and so everybody access the data which is residing in the data centers and most of the data centers are running on comsco infrastructure there so that that's the end of my presentation i think i have i have stuck to the time and so thank you very much rajat uh, thank you so much ashok uh, i think uh, i'm going to pick up Uh, operations technology and uh, before i go on to architect uh, vista um i want to uh, i'm a little uh, what should i say uh, prejudiced towards the operations guys so uh, samir i want to speak i want to bring your views in uh, so you know very similar to what uh, anupma said and ashok ji has told us how all of this is going to get hardwired and actually delivered i'm talking of the technology Uh, in JLL, we use the three thirty three hundred principle, right? So, uh, three dollars per square foot per year is what you spend on energy. Thirty is what you spend on lease or the real estate per se, and three hundred is what you spend on people. So clearly, your highest impact is in segment of people, right? Um, and thirty, of course. So, uh, you know, Arma has talked about space op- optimization, also touched upon by Ashok Ji, uh, and how. Uh, utilization optimization of space is going to help us plus uh, you know new uh, design trends such as bringing more collaborative space uh, is going to help us optimize the space reduce the number of workstation 
have flexible working, have agility, uh, and therefore you're optimizing the $30 spend, right? Uh, and you're coming up with sharper, uh, more optimal, more efficient real estate. About the 300, uh, and that's where you know we play, is how do we actually leverage technology to really up the game on experience, right? Uh, Anupma spoke of that on her last slide, is how do you provide all of it on one single interface to employees, the ability to book a desk, the ability to book a car, the ability to book a meal, the ability to book a meeting room. Uh, what, where are we on that? What do you see as the trend as far as experience of people um, enabled by technology goes? I think this is, this is, a, this is one of the biggest uh, challenge for us as uh, the operations guy. There is this perspective of the business leadership which comes and says, hey guys, uh, we, we just cannot let this whole pandemic situation affect the organizational behavior. Uh, you would have operations or the business operations team and they're coming back and saying, you know, guys, we are facing infosec related issues. We definitely want um, to get some of the people in, uh, but then also abiding by the uh, regulations which have been put in. So I think these solutions right now, Rajat, you have just briefly touched upon it. They are, they are extremely handy. So, uh, so for, so what, what I hear from the industry and even from my organization globally is first and foremost, they're adopting, uh, they're adopting a technology wherein, uh, wherein they are going to manage the way people are going to enter the office who should come in when they should come in and there are there are reminders saying that you should give yourself a check if you are facing some of the issues this is how it is so the wellness part is also weaved in together with the part that it has to ensure the safety of the employee and the fellow colleague so i think that's the first start point a person starts from home they really need to fill in that you know and declare that they are fit before they they get into the office if, if they don't declare that they will not get an access to the office. Then second part comes in booking of these spaces. I think booking of these spaces, booking of the meals, booking of the transportation, booking of meeting rooms, et cetera, et cetera, all is getting technology driven right now. And, and we see a very strong, very strong affinity from various stakeholders in this regard. And, and the third component on technology, obviously, is the digitized workspace today. Uh, the way that we are uh, experiencing um, over the webinar. So from a, I would say from a space where you had everything so, uh, it was so segregated. Today we have one platform sitting in front of the laptop. You can just do anything. Right? You don't need to be there in the office space to be, you know, kind of completing any of the activities. So from conducting meetings is something a norm right now. Uh, but from appraisal discussions to collaborations to sharing, et cetera, et cetera, I think the, the world is changing. The world is changing. Yeah. What, what we feel and what we have been hearing from the leadership is that the entire experience of being digitized may not go well as far as building teams is concerned. It may, it may not go well uh, as far as the bonding is concerned. That informal connect over a coffee, that informal connect over a, uh, a nicotine stick, I think that definitely helps bringing in. And, and a lot of the leadership, they strongly feel that the relationships that we have uh, developed and dwelled on over the last few years have helped us uh, sail through this tough time. Now, with everything getting digitized from an experience of an employee joining in and that to a virtual one, you get a laptop delivered at home, you get a pen, paper, everything getting delivered at home. There is this virtual thing happening. The kind of connect that those people are supposed to have with their leaders is missing. And uh, which right now, as we speak, uh, uh, is okay. Uh, but then not for very long. So I already see a lot of organizations have started the uh, planning a day out in office earlier it used to be a day out uh, you know um, in uh, for entertainment or something like that now they are planning for half a day in the office a day out in the office and wherein again uh, through the help of technology the technology is being leveraged everything is being taken care of from the safety wellness of the employees to uh, their productivity issues they get everything speak and span on their desk at the right places and and thanks to technology it is, it is so seamless right now so Rajat, i definitely see a lot of transformation 
taking cue of it. Uh, there have been discussions on having office, not office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but that's a separate discussion. I won't touch upon it because that's different. So that's that's what I feel. Awesome. I think uh, you know. I would. I'm glad you're saying that you will not touch upon whether we need an office or not. Uh, we we are very strong believers that we will need an office, um, and that we will have reason to come to work every day as far as JLL goes. Uh, because that's really, that's really no, what Rajat, we do. I, I, I am not touching upon this in the interest of time. Nothing, nothing more than that. I am a firm believer, and I am also from that orthodox school that uh, you know you would have, you will be coming to the office, and and not only orthodox school. I think that is that will always be the need of art. There are organizations yeah. who have who have Very done good, some experiment. Yeah. yeah. Very good segue into what I want to pose before uh, architect Gustav is, look, offices are here to stay. But taking a cue from all of what all of you have said, we have a more collaborative hybrid office because if you're a more collaborative uh, office uh, uh, with tech enablement, simply because now we are moving, uh, the whole move or trend towards hybrid working has got accelerated, right? So you'll have a larger proportion of people working outside of the office. You will have people working in the office, but when they come to the office, it'll be more for collaboration and teamwork. So you have an office, where you have optimization of space, you have higher collaboration content, higher huddle spaces, which will then make the whole space utilization also more efficient, right? And when they come to the office, their experience uh, is made completely, um, you know, uh, superlative with the help of technology. And technology also plays a role in ensuring health and wellness. So I think these are the key themes which are emerging from what I've gathered so far. Um, Vista, over to you. Uh, I know you are uh, you are quite a strong proponent proponent of technology uh, and you know intermingling technology with new trends in design, uh, enabling all of that uh, through technology, making a productive workspace, making a productive employee. So let's hear your views uh, before I go on to Piyush. Sure, thanks, um, Rajat. I was uh, beginning to wonder if I was going to get a word in. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me in. Um, well, you know, um, I just say that um, you know. I think, you know, it's been an eye opener for all of us through this COVID time. And, and uh, you know, we've really been forced, you know, those of us who have not embraced technology have been forced like never before. Um, you're looking at a technology survivor. I mean, I've survived through, you know, uh, you know, bits of technology that I've had to learn. And I'm sure a lot of audience resonates with that. Um, but I think, hey, it's great. I think, you know, what COVID has done has really taught us that you know, we don't need to have absenteeism marked in offices. We we can actually, you know, be conducting business, uh, you know, in in a in a virtual manner. Um, I've put a few slides together, and I'm actually going to stir the pot up uh, up a bit. Uh, I'm going to be looking at technology not as the end all and be all of everything. I'm going to look at it as something that helps us, but you know, which has led us to an entirely different, um, you know, meaning of what the office is all about. So um, let me let me just uh, get on to that. Um, I hope the screen is visible, right? So uh, purely from an understanding of um, you know what we really know about technology, and I'll try to be quick. I mean, technology enables physical comfort and communication. Um, better physical comfort allows for better wellness, and better communication allows for better well-being. Um, and uh, you know, so all of this together allows for greater productivity. Now we have learned that uh, you know technology has you know allowed us to be uh, more productive. Um, you know it has allowed us to um, engage in ways that we never thought before. Um, but the fact is that there are you know there are certain misconceptions that we have uh, regarding technology, and I'd like to you know really address some of them. I'd say there are good and bad aspects of everything. Uh, what we really know about technology at the workplace is all the things that Samir mentioned, and I'm not going to go over them. But I think the BYOD culture, which is bring your own device, you know, work from anywhere culture or uh, do it at your own pace culture. I think that's some of the things that technology has brought in that has really made a lot of difference. Um, I think we know a lot about, you know, much of what has been mentioned here. Uh, both in what Samir had, uh, you know, uh, described as well as uh, the Comscope uh, presentation had. Um, I'm going to just put five truths and a revelation. I'm going to just, you know, uh, sp spruce it up with a few images of, you know, work that we've done. 
Well, truth number one, you know, tries to blow the myth that technology means hardwired. Well, not really. Uh, technology is all about being mobile. And if we understand, you know, the beauty of being mobile, I think a lot of offices that we've done, uh, you know, in recent times for a lot of people have really, you know, been examples of spaces where mobility has been the key essence of, um, you know, of, of uh, you know, the way one works. And technology leading to mobility is, is the biggest, um, you know, um, uh, thing that's uh, happening currently. Um, another truth is that technology enabled does not mean, uh, you know, glitzy, cutting edge, smart looking offices, you know. Uh, technology rather has to be a silent partner. I think, uh, I think the more we understand this, we can, you know, sort of say that technology also happens outdoors. Uh, you know, the, the door you stepped out from the office still has Wi-Fi. Uh, you're still having streets and, and public spaces having Wi-Fi. So I think technology really it has to be a silent partner. It need not be too much in your face. That's the office we work from. It's a very tech-enabled office. It's, it's very, uh, you know, raw and rustic in its look. And yet it works. That's another office which, you know, has been done for a pharmaceutical company. You wouldn't imagine the kind of technology that's there. I mean, it, uh, you know, technology doesn't need to stare you in your face. The third thing I'd like to say is technology enables productivity, but productivity does not depend only on technology. Uh, as uh, one of you rightly said, you know, it's all about collaboration. The real productivity, if we really engage ourselves, is more to do with collaboration. The more we can collaborate, the more we can socialize. And therefore, can offices start becoming hubs of, you know, uh, social recreation, of, uh, of interaction? Can, you know, uh, meeting rooms be demystified from the formal look and suddenly start becoming, um, you know, more engaging, more relatable, more human is, is what I say. Um, you know, the biggest fear uh, presently is about robotics taking over, you know, the human interface. The biggest fear is about artificial intelligence taking over human choice. So I think these are some of the things that, you know, we have to be wary of as we embrace technology every day in our lives. I mean, I would be so troubled if I had to use my mobile to book just about everything from my food to my, you know, taxi to my, uh, you know, to the elevator stop to the, you know, destination I'm, I'm going to, you know, it, it, it can get a little too much. So I think, I think we need to balance the usage of technology. So um, truth number four, and this was, you know, very well said by Steve Jobs. You've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards towards technology, not the other way around. Um, so what it really means is that, um, you know, technology can be an enabler, but it should not be staring you in the face. Um, it should, you know, the, the customer experience or the human in experience in any space is the most important thing. Um, and I think that's what we have been demonstrating and looking at in many of our offices that we've been doing. We've tried to keep technology more as a support player, as a you know supporting cast rather than you know bringing it more upfront in every which way. Lastly, I'd say productivity is more about pride of place. It's got nothing to do with technology. You could be uh, you know working with technology at home and realizing that your productivity is half of what you were doing in your office, which was, you know, not so technology enabled before COVID. So I think, you know, pride of place and, you know, the feeling of being in a, uh, in a setup that's, you know, wonderful, that, you know, sort of engaging, that is collaborative, that has a human face, that is social. I think that will always be number one. That will be your number one productivity driver and technology will always be, uh, you know, a supporting cast in that endeavor. Um, I think, uh, you know, with that comes uh, a revelation um, and uh, apologies to um, Steve Jobs, uh, one of the, you know, the great guys who has so many quotes that are fantastic. Um, so, you know, he says that design is, uh, is not just about uh, what it looks like and feels like, it is about how it works. I'd just like to say that um, technology is not what it looks like and feels like, it's, you know, it's how it, you know, really works. And I think that leads us to the fact, you know, as Samir was mentioning, the future is the digital workplace. We have embraced it due to, you know, the COVID 
um, you know, uh, ep- uh, pandemic that has struck all of us. Uh, but the fact is that the future nature of the office is that of a club. It is where you're going to come to, not to work, but it's going to be a place you come to to meet each other, to keep the human interface alive. And I think that's that's what I uh, really had to share today in terms of you know my thoughts uh, on technology and productivity. Thanks so much, uh, Vistab. Uh, uh, and I think uh, we should have saved this for uh, the final concluding note as well. Uh, so it gives us, uh, it, I'm sure it gives all of us here uh, who are non-millennials uh, a bit of uh, hope, right? That uh, the human-to-human interaction, which really uh, drives, the, it's the real productivity driver, right? And I think one thing that we have to remind ourselves is that technology is an enabler and a very, very powerful enabler. Now, as technology is maturing in the workspace, we've realized the potential of uh, technology, right? But we have to uh, keep reminding ourselves that the workspace is meant for human beings and the workspace is meant for collaboration and teamwork. And I think that's where the shift uh, is already happening, right? It was happening pre-COVID as well, but I think it's just got accelerated uh, due to what's happened in the last eight months. So Piyush, uh, we have still about 10 minutes and I have to be fair to everybody. So uh, I'm saving the best for last, uh, if you like it, uh, Piyush. Uh, so Piyush, I want to hear your views, uh, you know, having, uh, since you're running operations for NatWest North, um, let us know what's, what's your business thinking uh, in terms of uh, leveraging technology uh, for workspace as employees come back to work, uh, you know, leveraging technology for the workspace, as well as ensuring the employees feel safe, secure, taken care of uh, when they return to work, right? Uh, is there a leverage that you're making on technology? And let's talk about real life interventions, right? You may have touchless, you may have touchless plus digital, a combination of both, uh, which gives that assurance and sense of security and safety to employees that, okay, now I'm coming back to a workspace, which is uh, focused and which has paid special attention uh, to my wellness, uh, and to my health and to my safety and using technology effectively as an enabler. Uh, so let us know what your views are and what's happening uh, at, NetWest, at NetWest. Thanks, Rajat. Um, it's been a very exhaustive and a very detailed discussion that has happened. And I think a lot of great points have been captured. Um, I just want to let me just uh, encapsulate a little bit from the background before we move to where we con- want to go ahead. Um, We've had great success, almost all organizations, in weathering through this storm and being able to meet our deliveries and deliverables. And a lot of that credit has been given to the technology that has evolved. Um, Technology, historically, in various segments, has evolved in silos so far. We've had various other drivers leading to various technological innovations. You know, space management, let's reduce the real cost. Um, Look to do bookings, let's get more work out of space utilization, you know. Let's get apps for cafeteria booking, transport booking, and automation of transport to you know improve utilization. Um, let's create spaces where employees can have a collaborative space. You know, use Zoom, etc. Create collaborative workspaces, digital spaces, etc. All that has been in silos, um, and all that has led to or enabled us to be able to deliver our requirements to the businesses. Um, but the actual delivery happened because the people already had a shared culture of value and a goal system because they've been working in those workspaces together. And that is what I think Vistap and Anupama and Samir are also encapsulating that, which will be the primary driving need always for organizations to have office spaces. Given a a country like India, where you, you will probably see a fairly decent churn and attrition in our workspaces. All organizations will practically reinvent themselves four years, five years, six years down the line. If you're in a complete digital only workspace, you, you will not be able to maintain your culture, the connect, the values, the ethos that, that have built your organizations up. And for that, you will have to have a consistent and a continuous interaction, which is where all these spaces will come into play. But then you're right. Um, any individual who's coming into office today also, uh, so like Asami said, they're looking for a day in office, but they're not looking to go to Beirut for that, right? They're not looking to go into a war zone and, you know, create a risk, their life, limb and safety over there. So um, there's a lot that needs to be brought into place. And yes, I agree with, with, with Vistav when he says it should be there. Technology should be there, but should not be visible. 
you know you can't have lines of people standing up and doing a temperature measurement coming in then check this check that check this do that do that that'll take away from that whole charm and and having something which will work seamlessly in the background you know able to uh, you know there has to be an integration between the hardware and the software to be able to identify what is that you want to achieve you want to provide a smooth and an access to employees while still being able to monitor them as they are coming in you know just putting cameras will not help work you may need to have to integrate that with something else you know maybe have that included as a part of a tablet based access control system integration you know maybe try and use uh, bring employees into a working space where they are not worried about who touched my space and how it has been touched and and what is the kind of you know safety that i have over here um do i need to sit so close to him do i need to sit there for him how do i work how do i collaborate do i need to carry my devices with me every time or do i need, will i get something over there so all of these questions will come around and what my view is that we will have a lot of and in in the last 8 months we've seen an explosion of the kind of solutions that are being offered right now around here but we still need to mature into a complete holistic solutions what ashok has pointed out are those highways that have to be leveraged by more hardware and software integrators which will collaborate and bring and utilize that technology 5g that ashok talked about is not just going to be there in our corporate structure every one of our users is going to be on a 5g device and they will be experiencing in their day to day life and and as we said it's a it's a hybrid workspace in their uh, at home workspace a very seamless network connectivity and utilization and they will be expecting more if not the same experience when you coming back into offices so the the focus and the um, and the uh, emphasis that we are putting in right now is to identify solutions which can collaborate between the platforms the hardware and the software to give a holistic approach and give to employees that total employee experience and the uh, total experience strategy that was spoken about over there um we are lucky we we not gone back into offices full time per se we will probably be taking a little bit more time to get back into our offices per se we've opened up where our big business basically is in the uk so we've gone into back into work there but in india we've got the time to plan and strategize this out but that's where we are looking at and that's where we are looking and experimenting and assessing various um uh, avenues and, and solutions around for that and um, okay. the other piece i wanted to uh, talk about is when we're looking to purchase these kind of solutions these are not uh, as i said there's a plethora and explosion that has happened recently we need to now also figure out the solutions that we that we take today should be integratable should be scalable to really achieve the benefits of the infrastructure upgrades that are going to come in the next 18 months 24 months as ashok was highlighting out poe uh, single use internet ethernet double use internet ethernet um 5g 6 uh, generation wifi all of these will only happen if your solutions are capable of scaling up you invest in something today you're not looking to throw it away 24 months down the line you're looking for it to build up and scale up and move further and that's that's where we are at right now awesome i think uh, fantastic uh, as a concluding note as well uh, so i'm just going to summarize over 2 minutes and i know we are short of time so we should take some questions to be fair to the audience um is we are saying that workplace trends and designs have got uh, the the accelerated uh, towards a more hybrid workplace collaborative workplace technology is emerging as a key enabler which will make and bring all of this hybrid workplace collaborative workplace uh, a new workplace trend to life right uh, which will help us deploy it uh, and i think uh, all of us are in agreement that technology cannot be intrusive isn't it technology must seamlessly integrate with experience without people having to feel uh, that they're being monitored uh, or without people having to feel that their lives have been intruded or their spaces have been intruded by technology so that's very important and uh, i think ashok uh, ji has given us um, the assurance that from a pure uh, tech perspective uh, to meet the demands uh, we have uh, the entire technology innovation sector uh, also evolving uh, very very quickly right uh, to increase the bandwidth because you're going to have more data coming out of facilities and offices uh, so whether it's setting up the offices to uh, support higher bandwidth uh, for data collection 
or it's being able to support hybrid work working, uh, we have the solutions uh, which are required in place already, and those solutions are further evolving. So I'm going to hand over to Bibor, and Bibor, would you like us uh, or um, Indrajit uh, do? Uh, you know, if there are some questions for the panelists, then why don't you take us through those? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Rajat. Yes, but like there are a couple of questions and a few interesting ones as well. This question is from Sanjeev Chabra from Nirman. He wants to ask, how do we deal with technology-related dis distractions at workplace? I think it, it's more from a HR standpoint, I would say. Uh, when I say HR points, uh, would be primarily, uh, primarily with the managers, the business, and the operations teams coming together. There is there is no hard and fast rule around. Uh, you know, if someone is using technology uh, excessively, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there is something that you can do. So there are usually what organizations do is they they define the guidelines, they define the disciplinary action, and also the managers are the ones who are supposed to keep a a brief check. Obviously, you cannot intrude on the privacy of an individual who's working. And if at all, it is around compliance of an individual. And if people are coming at the workspace, so if the need be, those technology-related gadgets may have to be deposited in lockers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are multiple ways and means around it. It is more about uh, defining processes, more about um, uh, awareness more about telling them that you know this is not right etc etc so uh, if you nip the bud uh, when it's or if you just nip uh, whenever it's happening for the first time i think it always helps so a disciplined environment and more uh, organizations keeping orientation program for their employees this all helps thank you and i think developing just to add to that developing yeah, that organizational culture um, is exactly why you need to go back into offices for that connect, for the ability to be able to uh, effectively um, explain what is the expectations from each and everyone, especially when there's a churn and the people are going to now uh, rotate in and out. That's that's the reason. Thanks, Piyush. And this one is for Vistas and Anupama. Uh, is the architectural industry a laggard uh, with respect to adopting technology? Discuss. I was thinking you should take that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the technology. I, 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 I'm sure this is a facility guy who's like to who, who's wanting to put the architects uh, in a spot uh, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> the architects always take the glamour of designing the absolutely super workplaces, uh, and it's us guys who come in and try, try to make those workplaces work for us. But I think you know, to be fair, um, there is a huge adoption drive within all of the architects that we have worked with. Uh, and they are very, very aware, uh, to be fair to the architect community. But Vistap, I'll let you, you know, speak in your defense more effectively than I have. <laughs> so there's this big debate, quite honestly, how much technology is good, you know, um, you know, and how much, what's the threshold of being dependent on technology? I mean, the kind of technology that one is being, you know, one is talking about nowadays is where you could actually feed in data. Uh, let's say you were designing a workplace, you could actually feed in data, um, you know, through a parametric model and actually get 20 options out, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the computer processing, the various, you know, uh, parameters that have been fed in. So how much technology is good uh, for architects? I would rather say architects would be much better off, you know, keep holding technology at bay and, uh, you know, actually exercising. If there is one field that still exercises the creative aspect of the human mind that still uses, you know, the creative side of the brain, I think it is architecture, it is art, it is music, it is drama, it is stuff like that. And I see architecture as frozen music. I see architecture as being something that still comes from a combination of the heart and the head. And therefore, technology needs to be balanced. And I think every organization will answer this particular question in a different manner, given the kind of culture they have within their organization. So I, you know, I think I totally agree. Great, uh, really. yeah, I, yeah, I think I totally agree with you, Stav. Uh, I think all of us have seen the social dilemma, right? Uh, it's about now not making technology immersive. So this also relates to the previous question. Is you go back to technology when you have a need. You're not addicted to technology because it is immersive and it is taking you within itself. It is 
trapping you in a maze, right? And I think that's what you're saying, Vistap, is that let's preserve uh, a bit of human ingenuity and creativity. Uh, let's not make technology immersive that it suddenly becomes a demon in which all of us uh, are, are, are overcome by. Uh, so I think it's about technology answering a need. So every time there's a need that I feel, I should have a solution offered by technology. And that's, will draw me, that's what will draw me to technology. It will not just keep me embedded within it. So I think that's where we are coming from. All right. I'll just um, add a one-liner to that, sure. if, if, if it's okay. Yeah. So just exactly what Vistab said, I think architecture is ultimately about creating experiential spaces for the end user. And, you know, it's about the touch and feel and the color and the fabric and the, you know, the whole sort of the emotional experience and the spatial experience that, you know, that, that we create in the 3D. But having said that, and you're absolutely right, technology should not uh, sort of uh, overshadow that by any means. But I think uh, we are starting to see a, a digital, uh, di digitally driven uh, design, you know, so digital experience design that is sort of coming into uh, architecture. And it's coming into design, but that is again as long as we use it to augment what we are doing versus you know sort of totally take over and overshadow uh, what the architects are trying to do. I think yeah, that would be the right balance, the right approach. Thank you, Anupama. I have one more interesting coming up from Mr. S. P. Chaudhary. Uh, I guess partially we have answered this, but still, in case if anyone wants to take it, what is likely major shift in future towards planning and construction of offices? and residential spaces due to digital transformation? Smart offices and smart homes. I think that's what is the future. And, and obviously, uh, when, when I talk of smart homes, primarily offices are going to be smart, agile, uh, hub and spoke. There, there are multiple concepts around offices which are going to come in. As far as the residential spaces are concerned, we we would always have this 80 20 80 percent will never change and we will see it that way only 20 percent which are progresses you will start seeing engagement or or the uh, evolving technology is to be adopted by them and the premium segment which is very small in india i think around one percent or so you will see smart homes coming in which will which will be driven by alexas or something like that obviously yeah. bmss would not be there I think it's a also uh, say, great point. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, one sentence. I'd also say homes that enable working from home so that the next time we are hit by a pandemic situation like this, we you know we don't find ourselves in the tight positions that we are in today, you know, where people are are uh, sort of scrambling for a workspace. Exactly. <laughs> and and two and the two working adults, two professionals typically typically in in you know sort of uh, crammed into one uh, one work in a home environment. So I think the homes would need to adapt uh, uh, to, to, to sort of cater to be more future proof, so to speak, more future ready for the next. And I, uh, think, yeah. and I think sustainability and wellness enabled by technology uh, to me is a big, big, uh, I think, trend. And that doesn't mean that uh, you need to have a premier home to be sustainable. Uh, an affordable home can also be sustainable. So I think uh, Given the corporates uh, and their focus around sustainability and wellness, uh, you know whether it's um, scientific uh, targets uh, being um, adopted by corporates uh, or sustainability development goals of the UN, uh, I think we'll see. Especially since in India, um, a large part of our infrastructure is going to be residential. I think sustainability and wellness will play a key role, enabled by technology. I think. I'd like to just add in something that I think. Uh, you know, there used to be this phrase homing from work uh, before the COVID days. And now, you know, there's working from home, which, you know, has, is, a, is a given. Um, I think more and more the boundaries between, you know, uh, the workspace definition and the living space definition are going to blur. You're going to be having uh, people who are going to be a hybrid model and, you know, who are going to be able to be equally comfortable in both places. So I start seeing this, the, the, the differences diminishing actually. Yeah, I mean, whatever everybody was saying is very correct. And so I think we should make it, make the spaces as more adaptable. And of course, technology is there to support those kinds of things. And so how to make the space work for us, that's, that's where it stands for. Okay, I'll just take this last one. So there are many coming in, but probably we may take them offline since we, are, we have paucity of time. So this one is from Ganapati, and he wants to ask any thought for the measures to be followed to restart offices. 
any tips from you guys to restart offices uh, huge that that requires a, a separate session to be very it honest. does it does <laughs> it i think that's that's a cue for your next one <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so definitely so in 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 brief i would say it's yeah. it's all about safety of the individuals globally as far as we are concerned as an organization and what i see multinationals they are very uh, uh, they are cognizant of the fact that uh, employees uh, should not feel threatened so they they don't push for people coming back to offices so it's uh, more, i'm i'm specifically talking talking more from an it its standpoint uh, there are there are regulations also which are currently being relaxed so that helps uh, but overall within the office spaces i think things around sanitization enhanced sanitization practices uh, social distancing measures uh, i would say idiot proofing of social distancing measures uh, that's very important and also regulating the employees coming to the office are i would say three key aspects which are to be done um there are thoughts about hvac issues there are thoughts about other things also now we can we can go on and on and on i think it it actually requires a lot of time to be very honest yeah it requires absolutely. a holistic approach because you need to evaluate it from every area and aspect that the employee will touch from their entry to the usage of facilities to what services would they need um how will they go across the day how much time are going to stick around over there and where else will they go and how do they exit out all of this will have to be thought out in great detail yeah, yeah. i think i'm i'm going to make an offer to the person who asked this question he can come to our office and we'll take him through the measures that we've taken as oh. well uh, yeah and he can probably also download our app to ensure that he takes a self assessment before he comes to the office uh it covers <laughs> all aspects so you know whether it is workplace sanitization as per cdc who recommendations or even hvac uh, mm-hmm. use of uv um use of non intrusive measures to um sort of implement social distancing uh, also ensure that people who are coming in um are safe and they do not pose uh, a threat of uh, pathogen uh, dissemination as well so yeah all right yeah thank you so much would you like to uh, have the concluding remarks raja yeah my concluding remark uh, i've already concluded the imports of the discussion technology as an enabler workplace is here to stay uh, it's going to be more collaborative uh, hybrid uh, styles of working are going to be supported uh, through repurposing of the workspace uh, technology is going to enable both experience plus also productivity um, i think i'd also end it with a word of thanks uh, for all of the panelists and to a patient audience uh, so amazing insights uh, i feel enriched as well at the end of the session uh, and i think i have i am in, i'm going to be in touch with some of you so i made some new friends as well yeah uh, Yeah, that's it thank for me. Yeah, thank you so much, Rajat, that... for steering yeah. it so well. And like, thank you so much for moderating it. And like, the way you have done it, and like, touching, touch, touching on all the points, and like, which were important, and bringing out the gist. And thank you, each of the panelists, for sparing time and being here today, despite and like a working day. Thank you all, and thank you, lovely audience, for being participative and asking so many interesting questions. look forward to meeting like, you once again in our next session and like following up on the same uh, topic and like as a series thank you so much thank you all thanks a lot thank you thank you, thank you so thank much you. thank you all thank, thank you bye bye